Hey everybody, it's Mr. L Sidekick here, welcoming you back to more su Let's Play Super Metroid. In the last episode, we started this off with a... I'm not gonna say a bang, because it was like it took the... I forgot that I... I mean, literally, I just turned off the f recording for the first episode, and I turned it back on again. And I already forgot that I only have 30 health. Oh, that's fun. Um... Anyways, in the last episode, we didn't really start off with a bang, because it took me six minutes to get through the opening cutscene. But, in this episode, we are gonna... We're gonna be exploring the planet Zebes, which we landed on in the last episode, and, uh... We're gonna have a, good, a grand old time. We're gonna... We're gonna have a grand... My apple. It's, grandma apples are good apples. I like grandmas. I like apples and grandma apples. I like grandmas. What am I saying? I, I, I don't know. Uh, it's been such a long time since I've actually just recorded something on my own. Um, it, I'm just so used to recording with Peter as well that it it just like half half the conversations start with him, and I'm just like, yeah, yeah, uh huh, uh huh, and then I'm not really like that, but I, I practice. He get he has good he has good ideas for conversations and I'm all by my lonesome lost in time lost in space um so now we're back we're back out at the start and as you can see it stopped raining which is a good thing I don't want my ship getting wet I don't know why that would be such a such like a bad thing but I mean you don't know what kind of rain this atmosphere would give. It, it could be like giant acid rain with like pH levels of negative three. I know that's not how pHs work, but imagine something so acidic that it doesn't even register on the chart anymore. Like it just burns. And I mean, I know the, the acids on the chart already burn. But like this burns even more so, because it's just you're just on fire. Acids don't put you on fire. What am I? What is going on in this episode? I think I've. I think the triangle jump from last time made me kind of lose it a little bit. Um, and I realize I'm headed the wrong way. I didn't want to go that way. I wanted to go down, because you can do things now down. I mean, we could do, we could have done them before, but I, I like to do them. The, the now. The here and the now. So you can go in this room. You can bomb some walls. Look a bit like mold. I was going to say they look a bit like moldy cheese, but they, they don't really. They're not entirely like moldy cheese. Only slightly. Slightly mold cheese. Um, like, it, let's, let's take a look closer. Look, I'm just looking, it look, okay, it actually looks a bit more like a cross between moldy cheese, a sponge, and like a chocolate chip cookie. I don't know. People in the comment section, tell me what you think. What? What are the blocks in Planet Zebes made of? Um, also, tell me how you pronounce Zebes. I should have said that in the first episode. I, li I like audience participation. If, if you like audience participation, s s sound off in the comment section. Say, hey, it's, it's good. It's, it's a good boy. Audience participation is a good boy. Really, really, Sean? That's the best he can come up with? Okay. Um, so, I should I should put a little information into this. For those that haven't played the original Metroid, this room here is actually where Mother Brain used to be. Um, and... Technically, that mist tank we just took was like the, the the gun under the pillow from Mother Brain. I mean, I don't know how many people keep guns under pillows. I don't. 
But it, I mean, it just seemed analogous because, you know, like, she has missiles underneath her pillow. And I mean, technically, it's just her entire body. It's un Because, I mean, look, Mother Brain is just a brain in a jar, which is supposed to be a computer. So, everything is underneath her. So, um, <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. Uh, anyways, you can, there is, as I just revealed, there is an energy tank up there, and you're supposed to generally get it once you have the high jump boots. However, um, if you're skilled at bomb jumping, which I messed that up, um, if you skill the bomb jumping, you can bomb jump your way up there. Um, which I am doing right now. I missed again. So let's play curse is getting to me. Wh what? What? Well then, so how are y'all doing this fine? Probably evening, because I like to put things up at 6 o'clock. What? What? How did that- What? No! I just- I just want the E-Tank! Just give me- just give me life! I just want life! There we go! I apparently was just timing it all wrong. I don't like timing things wrong, because it just gets annoying. But this is not the only thing we can do here. Once, now that we have power bombs, we can actually clear out that bottom row. And... If you can get up and get in the... Thank you. Now that we actually have room. Um... Yeah, it's, it's probably easier just to power bomb this as well, since you have a radius of the power bomb. Um, you can actually get this early as well. Normally, you would need the speed booster, power bombs, and the gravity suit. But with my method, you don't need it. As long as you are good at wall jumping, and you jump through the door, you can get in just fine. And you get two missile tanks. Excuse me. Um, I learned a lot of these tricks through, like, randomizer runs. Because I like to do the Super Metroid randomizer. Um, casual mode only, because, uh, I'm a filthy casual now, huh? <laughs> I, it's because I like to 100% things, and casual mode is the only mode that has all of the items actually in rotation. Um, all the others have items taken out of it, and I don't like that, because even though it's technically a dip more difficult challenge, I like feeling good about getting everything and not missing anything. It doesn't make it a little easier, sure, but I mean, it has its own trials and tribulations. I'm pretty fucking good. I didn't... You know, I really should have taken the break in the episode to look up what the... Shock! Your shock attack? Is it shock? I should have taken the break between the episodes to actually look up what that item is even called. But I didn't. Because, you know... What are you going to do? Um, but, uh, because as I said, uh, the randomizer, you can sometimes get whatever the hell it's called. Shock attack. Screw attack, that's it. I figured it out. I did it. We did it, Reddit. <laughs> we did it. Screw attack. Oh, wow. I am not going to live that one down. It's only the most iconic move in the game, and also one of the oldest, um, gaming websites on the net. It's w I used to go on ScrewAttack.com. I was never a member, but I used to enjoy the videos. I love ScrewAttack. There, 
like they're good company. Um. Yeah, but I heard I forget the name of the screw attack. Uh, anyways. Yeah, sometimes you can get the screw attack instead of the morph ball, and on some occasions the morph ball is in one of the worst rooms in the game if you have very low health. Once you have later items, you are going to be fine. I actually hate that room so much that I place it as the last place we go on my runs. And it's going to stick to it. You're not going to see me go there until the last rooms of the run. As we're heading to where the final boss is, that's going to be the last three items we pick up are going to be in that room. Um, well, anyways. Um, so yeah, screw tech, that's, that's what that item is called. And it's also a good website, which makes me... I'm thinking about all those old gaming websites that I used to go on, like, um, uh, game trailers. Is game trailers still around? Do, do the kids know what gametrailers.com is? Because, or GameSpy? Is GameSpy around? I know GameFAX is, because I was, I was playing Persona 4 earlier, a few days ago, and I was using a guide on GameFAX, so I know that's still exists, but I know Newgrounds still exists, but it's, I haven't been on Newgrounds in a long time. Man. I'm a, now I've got a real nostalgia trip for all, like, the old internet uh, gaming sites I used to go on. Okay, there, there used to be this site, um, I think it was like MarioGames.com, and it was... I have no idea how many viruses were on it, but I, I didn't care. There was a lot of cool Mario games, Mario Flash games, and I loved it. Um, it's where I played Super Mario 63 for the first time, um, and there was this music trivia game where it's like, hey, uh, name, name the game that this Mario song came from. And by the end of it, I was, I knew, like, all of the answers. Because I'm just that kind of guy who just plays a quiz over and over again in order to get 100% on it. I memorize the answers. So I know what to do next time. Um, and I mean, because of that game, I can tell you now the Beer of Budo is from Super Mario Land 1. And, uh, and I can still probably name a lot of the songs from Mario RPG, too. Or even some of the, like, the, the course themes from Mario Kart DS were on there, and I'm like, I don't even own that game yet, but I know the songs to it. I, I do own Mario Kart DS now, but, um, that's neither here nor there. Oh, I forgot about the little, uh, the animal's little chirpy noise. Alright, so these animals are down here to teach you about the wall jump, which I already know way too much about. Because I am an expert. I'm not an expert. I'm... I just like to pretend I am to make myself... make me feel better about myself. <laughs> uh, hi little buddy. Um, but... The interesting thing is... When I first played this game, I could not wall jump for the life of me. N couldn't figure out how to do it, never realized the timing. And it was actually a, a, a ROM hack, a Super Metroid. Uh, um, what was the name of it? Was it Phase 2? I think it was Phase 2, Super Metroid Phase 2. It taught me how to wall jump. And I mean, like, it didn't give me a step-by-step -step tutorial about how to wall jump. It literally was like, hey, you can do this the really slow way, or you can wall jump and get everywhere. And I'm like, well, I better learn to wall jump. I don't want to do this. I, I don't like slow. And as such, I became a really good wall jumping guy. Because of the fact that, um, 
a ROM hack was like, hey, wall jump. And I'm like, okay, how high? That's, uh, that wasn't... Did that make any sense? I sometimes wonder if I actually make any sense on these videos. Or if I'm just rambling nonsense, which I tend to do a lot. Um, one of my friends has compared my ability of random nonsense spewing to that of Principal Skinner's in the Steamed Ham skit. Like, I, I could pull the Aurora Borealis line and no one would be surprised. And I, I can say with such conviction that people a actually believe me, probably. Um... And th I don't know if that's a good thing or not. I mean... I like to think, since I am an actor of... Or a one... I guess technically I can consider myself an actor because I was in a whole bunch of my high school shows. Um... But... <laughs> I'm, I'm more in a wannabe kind of stage right now, but if I can pull something off believably like that, does that mean I'm a good actor? Am I the greatest actor of all time? That that the answer to that is no. I because I'm I'm just a normal boy who can do some voices. Not all of them good. Um. One of the voices I can do, though, is, um, is one from the show The Busy Town- The Busy World of Richard Scary, which I used to love as a kid, and I- I think we have- I still have the VHS tape of, like, several episodes. Um, and one of the episodes, which I actually spent over an hour last night trying to find, um, was an episode where Huckle Cat and Lowly Worm, um, got stuck in Mr. Von Flugel's balloon. Like, they, Mr. Von Flugel, um, was offering to take them for a flight, um, but then he realized he forgot the picnic basket, so he stepped out of the balloon, and the balloon sailed away with Huckle and Lowly inside. And, um, to my memory, uh, they proceeded to go down, the, like the balloon flew down to, um, Busy Bay, which is the giant body of water nearby Busy Town. And, um, they passed by the three fishermen, who, who are like the town, like, hobos. Um, and, and, like, Huckle calls down to them and says, He caught anything yet? That's not how Huckle sounds, but that's my best little kid voice. Um, and one of, the, and one of the guys just pulls up his fishing line. And, uh, you see on the end is a boot. Like, uh, just an old boot. And behind him is just another pile of boots. He's only been catching boots. Um, so a Huckle will ask him, Do you got anything? And the fisherman just looks up deadpan and says, Not but an old boot. And it, it's, it's just really, I enjoy it a lot. Oh, however, when I watched the episode again last night, I realized that the fisherman doesn't actually say nothing but an old boot. He says, oh, all we've been catching is old boots at the beginning of the episode. But, I mean, there's an also, there's another f funny scene with that, where he, try he keeps trying on the boots, but none of them fit, so he just keeps throwing them on the pile. And it just progressively gets bigger and bigger. But, that's neither here nor there. It just shows my memories, not... Well, I mean, like, I was... Maybe five when I used to watch that. So my memory isn't perfect. Um, another episode of that I really liked was the episode Patrick Pig Learns to Talk. 
um, which was a story about a little boy in Ireland who couldn't talk. So his, so some the local people at the pub, um, like say to his father, "Hey, why don't you take him to the Blarney Stone? Have him kiss the Blarney Stone. He'll be able to talk then." So the father is like, "Is it gonna work?" And the people say, "Oh yeah, definitely. Positively, it's gonna work." So they go to the Blarney Stone. They kiss. The the boy kisses the stone. And he just starts spouting every Irish phrase imaginable. Aaron go bra, O'Malley, O oh me, O oh my, O oh County Court, County Galway, County Henry, or whatever. Um, and and th this is why I also am thinking about this, because that's another vo there's another voice in this I can actually do pretty well. Um, and the father now turns back to the people in the pub and says, well, th thankfully he started talking, but there is- is there any way to get him to stop? And, um, the townspeople now say, eh, it's possible, it could be, and one of them just goes, probably not. <laughs> That's another- I, I, I don't know why, it's the really gruff voices that make me laugh every time in these kind of shows. Because it's just kind of out of nowhere how gruff they are. Um, <laughs> I, I, just, I just rambled for, I think, like five minutes about Richard Scary, completely passing over that we are not only, um, we not only beat a first boss, but we're in, un well, not the first boss, I, I keep calling Sports Ball the first boss, because I, look, I don't consider the fight with Ridley at the beginning of the game a boss fight, because he can't win. And, like, that, the Chozo statue that comes to life is, yeah, it's, it's a challenge, but I don't consider it a, like, a traditional boss, per se. I'd say it's, like, more of a mini-boss, like the Mr. Frosty that you're gonna fight, um, on your way to... I was gonna say Wispy Woods and Green Greens, but... Now I was like, no, that's Poppy Bros. Senior that you fight. You don't fight Mr. Frosty. You fight Mr. Frosty on your way to Lo 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 and La La La. There we go. It's been a bit since I've played Kirby Superstar, and I definitely do want to play Superstar or Superstar Ultra on this channel. Maybe, maybe I'll do that with Peter if I can ever, if we ever get in person and start recording, because that would be a fun co-op game. If not, I, we could always do our normal routine, or I can do some of this if I actually end up... If you guys like me on my own, um, this is actually kind of interesting, because I've never really done anything on the internet on my own. It... Or with my voice, at least. Like, you guys have heard me with Jack and Liam on Film Field, and with Peter on this channel, but, um, never really anything on my own, like a song of lame as a rob. That's, that, that was the best thing I could come up with, that's the only thing I could think of what I heard on my own. Can you tell I'm a theater kid? I sing a lot. I haven't sung, I haven't really sung anything yet, but I did mention that I was in my high school show, so I, you could, I guess, imply, or infer, I guess is the proper term, that I am a theater student. I probably have mentioned uh, theater stuff in the other videos, too. Um, but, um... Oh, hey, look, it's Craig. Wow, that was a really easy boss fight. That wasn't the boss fight. I, um... So, we're coming about up on time, but I think I'm gonna... gonna fight Craig, and then we're gonna leave it off. Um... So, Craig, he is a kind of 
It's kind of a classic with how big he is. Um, I think people like I even know the I even knew the crate fight before I ever played Super Metroid because it's just a classic fight. Um, and I think it was also in one of the I Want to Be the Guy games. I can't remember which one, but um, it's always a, a fun romp whenever you involve either Kaizo or I Want to Be the Guy. Oh god, I'm... Oh, this is... This is not the best grade fight up in if I'm gonna be honest. Um... Like, usually I'm luckier than that. Oh! Yeah, Crane is a fairly easy boss. All you gotta do is just shoot him in the mouth four times with the super missiles and... goes down like a... I don't know why I keep coming up with weird metaphors, but... or trying to. Um... But... Going down like a wet piece of fish. That's the only thing I could think of. And that's not even a real phrase. <laughs> what, what? Wet piece of fish? Like, what, what even? All fish are wet. I mean, presumably. I mean, they're in the ocean all the time. You have to presume that they're kind of wet. Uh, regardless of whether or not they want to be <laughs> Do fish want to be wet? Or are they just stuck with being wet due to their situation? Being the fact that they're always, always underwater? <laughs> That's a good question. People in the comment section, if you <laughs> tell me what you think. Do fish like to be wet? Or is it just- are they just victims of circumstance? <laughs> Push- put that into National Geographic. Time Magazine. Esquire. Vague. Not Vogue, Vague. The- the- the fa the Vogue ripoff from Persona 5. The one that, uh, on Takamaki gives you as a going away present, if I'm not mistaken. That wasn't a spoiler, because all Persona games end with the main character going away in the end. Sometimes he comes back for two fighting games and a dancing game, but sometimes he doesn't. Like the people in Persona 2, who were never heard from again. <laughs> Um, like, I, I have my own opinions on the whole Persona spin-off franchises that I'm not going to go into this episode, because, uh, that would be Kraid. It's a good place to end, I think. So, next time on Super Metroid, we're going to proceed into the lower depths of Norfair, and I'm probably going to talk about everything but Super Metroid. Because that's how this game is shaping up. I'm. This is more just a commentary track for me, where I just have Super Metroid running in the background, and I just go on random tangents that no one really cares about. All right, so I will see you all hopefully next time when we return to Super Metroid. Good night, everybody. Oh, Connor! Oh, Banyan! Will the child Aaron, never stop talking? Eventually, possibly. Probably not. Memory.